What's up, guys, and welcome back to Beyond the Void Horror Podcast. My name is Alex, and today we're going to do a spoiler-free review of Older Gods, a Lovecraftian-style horror that just came out. Let's check it out. So I was reached out to by Wagyu Films, who actually put this movie out, to watch and review it under no, there's no contract, there's no nothing, I get to speak about this movie as I want, I didn't get paid for this, but they did provide me a screener link, and thank you very much for that. So what is Older Gods all about? Well, it's a indie film that was done on less than a million dollar budget that is about a guy who is just lost his friend. These are school friends that they grew up together, they'd known each other. Other, they'd taken care of each other and somehow kind of grew apart over time and he soon finds out that a tragedy happened to one of his friends this guy chris rivers it's a package from in the mail with a with a video explaining what he's been up to and what he wants his friend chris to do next which is investigate this cult or this group of people who are worshiping and trying to raise a deity a older god an elder god some might say and uh yeah it might be the one you might be thinking of it may not be so we'll find out when you see it so immediately as soon as chris you know starts figuring out this you know what's going on things start going haywire it's almost as if he peeked behind the curtain and insanity rushed on in which you know if you've been a fan of lovecraft you know that this is something that really kind of distorts people's perceptions and reality time they start fearing things and you know basically becoming paranoid immediately in a lot of instances and same goes here this movie kicks off pretty fast although i want you to understand that this is not fast-paced movie this is a movie that you're going to want to dig your feet into literally put turn off the lights and listen to a lot of it this is a very dialogue heavy film that is shot very well so there are some aesthetic treats in here very artistic you can tell that this is a higher level of shooting in a way that they're not just trying to make a film but they want to make something a little more artistic though there isn't a lot of money behind this so they didn't go buck wild on everything but i was expecting this movie to be a little bit more monstrous and creature centric but it kind of goes for a little bit more of a baseline of reality kind of bending things going wrong that people surrounding the house knocks at the door phones ringing things like this that are kind of trying to build up your creative sort of fear in your mind which you know i think this film does a, a fairly decent job at creating an atmosphere the soundtrack or score or whatever helps with that some of the camera work also does as well but again we're working with a much smaller budget and it isn't going to be something that is going to be as wild as maybe you are expecting yes obviously most people consider lovecraft to be all about tentacles and stuff like that you know a lot of it has to do with the lore and that's why i say this is a very heavy dialogue driven story that the more you listen to the more you benefit from actually enjoying the film otherwise to most people i would assume that this might be a little too much of a slow burn so if you're not into slow burns i would definitely eh, you might want to skip this one but you know it's up to you if you're into lovecraft and then you're probably into long lectures of science which isn't always that interesting if you've read the books you know what i'm talking about this doesn't have that kind of thing in there but the investigative side is in there because chris rivers is going around in sorts of uh, investigation on what has happened to his friend the odd thing is and the little disrupting in my mind while i was watching this is he doesn't really go that far to investigate things he kind of investigates a few things and then literally walks out into the woods and that's his investigation but he does find coordinates and things like that that kind of like lead him in a direction his friend apparently had like a wall of crazy you know where everybody is like trying to figure out with string what's going on and so he's got his own wall of crazy in this package that he sent to his friend and you know there's a lot of drama involved in this movie because it is sort of about this relationship between chris 
and his friend, William or Billy, him coming to terms with being a good person or not, or is he a good person, and the evil that is sort of lurking out there in this entity, in this deity that is sort of uh, coexisting in his space in this movie that you get to see over the time that you watch it. But again, I was expecting this to be a little bit more horrific, a little more bloody, obviously. There is blood, but I wouldn't really consider it to be anything too wild. There is a couple of things in the movie that involve like cutting people and stuff like that, but it's done a little bit more of a classier way than to uh, gore it up, which, you know, I gotta say, you know, I am a person that does like to dig deep in the pile of watching some of the worst, craziest, most ridiculous horror movies to find the most schlocky, funniest, wild movies ever. And I think I've grown a sort of accustomed to that kind of taste in some ways while still being able to appreciate the finer arts. This, like I said, may be a little bit more classier than me <laughs> in some regards, and I think it might be for other people. It does try to play everything a little bit on the middle side of reality and uh, bending that reality just slightly enough to make you kind of unnerved in some regards but not you know creatures like with like distorted faces and you know nothing like that this is much more of on a realistic level of a Lovecraftian sort of going mad tale. There is sort of like this deity speaking to him in, in some parts, which I found interesting. And I would like to see more in the future from this director. I, I think they have talent. It's just, it's not necessarily a film for me, but maybe it is for you. You know, if this is like, if you're a very lore centric kind of person and you like those sort of art house films that kind of just kind of put you in that space, you know, like the movie Pi is a perfect example. It's like, they really didn't really do all that much in it. But what they did do is create sort of an atmosphere and a sort of style about it that has kind of brought you into the film about this, like nothing is really, really occurring other than what's going on in this guy's mind. And that's kind of what you're going to get here on a smaller level. It does look good, but again, I was looking for a little bit more. I think with Lovecraft, there's, there's a lot of different types of people who really like Lovecraft. There obviously is the lore centric people. There is obviously the schlocky people. There's the creature people. I like it all. I, I'm kind of like, I, I, I do like to have a little bit more creatures but i still think that there is a lot to say about this film and the attempts that it made to do something that's trying to kind of ride the line of reality instead of going too far but i like going too far that's why we call ourselves beyond the void here because we're going beyond the void <laughs> but anyway i'd probably give this movie about a 5.5 or 6 a 6 is probably more along my speed i would watch this again but it wouldn't be high on my list to rewatch because you know, there's going to be people that are going to find some of this kind of boring. It's not that it is. It asks a lot of the viewer. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. And in that regard, some people may not like this type of film for that reason. Overall, I think it just was lower on my scale than I wanted it to be. But maybe it's for you. It's only a dollar on Amazon right now to watch. You can even buy it for three bucks. So I definitely think it's worth a watch for a dollar. Like it is not a bad film at all. There's a lot of competency here. I would definitely like to see what this director can do with a hell of a lot more money. So that being said, maybe this isn't the one that's going to get me and my attention or everybody, but there's talent there and I definitely want to see more. But that's that's everything, guys. I really appreciate you coming by. I'm going to try to put out some more videos. I've been struggling to get the energy here, but I'm working on it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit the like and subscribe button on there. And if anybody wants to hit the bell notification to know when I got a new you know video out, please do. But other than that, thank you so much for coming by. And as always, long live the void.